The best ISO for underwater photography really depends on your conditions and your depth. ISO is, uh, is the best ISO is the one you can get away with. We start with the whatever is native to the camera. My favorite ISO? Well, depends on what's going on. The best ISO for underwater photography is the lowest one that you can pull off while still getting a good baseline exposure. ISO raises the entire brightness of the scene. Basically, it lifts the entire exposure up and makes it brighter, but at the cost of also making your shot a little noisier. So in general, keep your ISO as low as possible for the best image quality, but boost it up when needed, such as if you've got limited natural light, maybe it's a really overcast, cloudy day, you can't get away with your minimum setting, you might need to bring it up a stop or two. So what is the best ISO for underwater photography? Um, that really depends on which camera you're shooting. Um, obviously, some cameras have higher or uh, have more restrictive ISO limitations than other ones with that introduction of noise into your image. Um, and it's, it's always a balance in what you're willing to sacrifice. Um, are you willing to sacrifice a little bit of noise in the image for um, potentially being able to get more effective light on your foreground subject? Um, you can use that ISO to kind of cheat your strobes a little bit. So going from 100 to 200, basically is making your strobes twice as powerful. Um, so, you know, that, that of course keeps going. So 200 to 400, 400 to 800. But with each of those increases, you're gonna add a little more noise to the image. Um, it's really sort of what you're, what you're willing to sacrifice. Of course, upping those ISOs as well is going to allow more ambient light into your image as well. So if you're not able to compensate for that with shutter speed, um, that's something to take into consideration. The best ISO for underwater photography uh, for black and white, for sure, between 400 and 500. For wide angle, to me, between 200 and 400. For macro, probably 100, 160. But, uh, you know, it's just a personal, personal decision. So uh, I always start with a low ISO, mainly because I want to be able to shoot open. But if I have to start raising that ISO, it's an artificial gain of light across the frame. So unlike shutter speed, unlike f-stop, it doesn't have a specific personality to it. It doesn't control the background. It doesn't control the uh, motion. It doesn't control the uh, distance of the, the focal length, rather. Um, instead, it gains across the entire image so I can lighten or darken the image when my other two settings don't work. So if I've maxed out my shutter speed and maxed out where I want to be for my f-stop, then I'm going to go to my ISO to start using it to boost or diminish the light coming into the camera. All right, so I've been shooting the Canon R5C the last year, and uh, this camera has a base ISO. And so um, currently when I'm shooting with the Netflix spec, the base ISO with C-Log3 is ISO 800. So the best ISO for that camera is ISO 800. So when it comes to underwater um, video and using ISO, I actually set my ISO to auto. Now that may sound completely wrong at first, but with my other settings, uh, it works. So I'm usually setting my aperture to around F8. That's gonna give me enough depth of field. I'm gonna set my shutter speed, that's set because I'm using that 180th rule. So if I'm shooting 60 frames a second, then my shutter, my shutter speed is gonna be 125th. And then my ISO is on auto, but I put the exposure compensation down to minus 0.7. That's going to protect any highlights that are in my scene. Also create a little bit more contrast. Um, if you're putting this footage and you are zero on the meter and put that on a HD TV, then the image can look a little bit washed out. So that's the kind of go-to settings, but then with the auto ISO, that is going to adjust up and down and that will change depending on what environment I'm in underwater. Depends on the time of year, weather conditions, whether you got cloudy or sunny or something like that. Uh, time of day as well, but in the middle of the day, Caribbean in June, pretty much some of the brightest times you're going to have. 
Um, so ISO can be kept pretty low, usually between 100 and 400 in that kind of range. It's rare in a wide angle setup uh, such as this that I find myself outside of that range um, for the sensitivity on the ISO. If you go with a really high ISO, you'll discover that you're getting a lot of noise. And with digital cameras, that noise usually is not a very attractive look. So I try to stay as low as possible. And, and it, just for an example, that's usually about ISO 100 for macro. And then I'm typically in that ISO, say 200 to 400 for most of my general wide angle work.